hey guys welcome back to another tutorial video my name is Chioma thank you so much for clicking in today we'll be doing step by step on how to fill the form I-864 thank you so much for watching please like share comment and subscribe to my channel Today, like I say, we'll be filling the form IA64. Firstly, you have to check for the expiration date. My expiration date is 2021. Firstly, when filling up this form, you have to type or print in black ink. And if you need extra space to fill up form, you have to go to the space provided in part 11 to fill it up and you must answer these questions carefully and accurately with that being said let's dive into it i've already filled this form so i'm going to be explaining the form to you so number one this form i'm filling it this form is for the petitioner. It's for the petitioner. So, on number one, you have to fill in the petitioner's name, which is Vivian Williams. So, 1A, he says, I'm the petitioner. I filed or I am filing for the immigra immigra immigration of my relative. So, in this form, I click the petitioner because it's the petitioner that is filing this form. But if it's 1B, 1B says, I filed an alien worker petition on behalf of an intending immigrant who is related to me as my, you have to put the person's name. 1C says, I have an ownership interest of at least 5% in in which filed an alien worker petition on behalf of the intending immigrant who is related to me as my you put the person's name there one D says I am the only joint sponsor so in this case we are clicking we clicked on the petitioner but if you are the joint sponsor you click on one d then one e is talking about if they have like first and second joint sponsor then one f is talking about if the petitioner is deceased so you click on that one and put the name of the intending migrant too as well so you see that the person's name is Vivian Williams and she is the petitioner. So let's move over to the next one. The next one it says note if you are filing this form as a sponsor, you must include proof of your US citizenship, US national status. Or lawful permanent resident status so it says you must include your proof of your US citizenship and US status or lawful permanent resident status that is your green card part 2 is talking about the information about the principal immigrant so the principal immigrant is the husband the husband name the last name is williams 1b is john that's the first name then 1c the middle name is arinze then the mailing address of the immigrants 2a the mailing address in the care name of john williams 2b is talking about the street and the name so the street number is 132 first town 2c 
is streets we click on because that is what they have 2d says city or town city or town is lagos state 2e they don't have any states 2c they don't have zip code 2g they don't have any province 2h they don't have no postal code 2i the country is nigeria other information is for the immigrant too as well country of citizenship or nationality is nigeria number four the month the date and the year so the month is zero six zero six ninety eighty that is the date of the birth of the immigrants number five is the island registration number so this person hasn't come to us before so they don't have any alien registration number number six is talking about the uscis online account number if any so this person don't have any account number from the uscis so we leave that aside number seven is the daytime telephone number so since the person is in nigeria nigeria they use plus then you put the number in there so i did one two three four five six seven eight just for the purpose of filming this video so let's move over to the next one part three it's talking about information about the immigrants you are sponsoring so number one says i am sponsoring the principal immigrant name in part two so in part two the sponsoring immigrant name in part two if it's there you click yes so the name is there so we clicked yes so number two says i'm sponsoring the following family members immigrating at the same time or within six months of principal immigrant name in part two do not include any relative listed on a separate visa petition so if there's any family member immigrating at the same time within six months the principal within six months of the principal immigrating name in part two then you indicate so number three says i am sponsoring the following family member who are immigrating more than six months after the principal immigrants so if that is you you click on number three so this one says family member one so if there is any family member migrating you put their names on 4a so since this person is the only since we click on number one yes so we don't have to fill up because the person doesn't have any family members coming along so we leave the space blank so you see that they have family number one family members two family members three and family members four so we don't have to fill it up because there's no family members um coming so let's move on to the next one the next one part three the continuation of part three information about the immigrants you are sponsoring the continuation he says enter the total number of immigrants you are sponsoring on this affidavit which includes the principal immigrant listed in part two any immigrant listed in part three item one to twenty eight and if applicable any immigrant listed for this question 
part 11 additional information do not count the principal immigrant if you are only sponsoring family members entering more than six months after the principal immigrant so he's talking about the person you are trying to bring here so in part two so we listed just one person which is john williams so we just have to indicate one person so part four is talking about the sponsor that is the person we indicate the first one the name we put in there which was vivian williams on the first page we fill up so it's about the sponsor also known as the petitioner so the sponsor's full name they needed it so the number one a is family name that's the last name of the sponsor is williams one b is the first name one c is the middle name the middle name is chisum the first name is vivian so we move over to the mailing address the mailing address 2a in care name of vivian williams this is also for the sponsor's mailing address 2b the street number and name 1532 west moss is in apartment street or floor so we click on apartment 2d say city or town so this person stays in chicago that's the city the, the state 2e is illinois 2f is the zip code that's 60626 province they don't have no province 2h postal code they don't have no postal code 2i the country is usa is your current mailing address the same as your physical address yes so this person click yes so they said if you answer no to item number three provide your physical address in item number 4a to 4h that is this one right here if you indicate no then you complete from 4a to 4h we move over to the other information other information about the sponsor so other information about the sponsor country of domicile country of domicile is usa number six date of birth the month the date and the year the month zero two the date zero one nineteen eighty six and number seven it says city or town of bet is Lagos. Number eight, it says state or province of bet is Lagos. Number nine, country of bet, Nigeria. Number ten, U.S. social security number. So the security number we put it there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the citizenship or residency. Eleven A says if the person is a U.S. citizen, you click on it. Eleven B, I am a U.S. national. Eleven C, I am a lawful permanent resident. So we clicked on eleven A because the person is a u.s citizen so number 12 says sponsors a number if any so they have their a number as well number 13 says sponsors uscis online number so they don't have any online 
account number of USCIS. So he says, Ministry service to be completed by petitioner sponsors only. I am currently on active duty in the U.S. Army Force, Forces or U.S. Coast Guard. So we clicked no. The person is not on U.S. US Armed Forces or U.S. Coast Guard. So we move on to the next one. The next one is saying part five. Part five is the next one. So he's talking about sponsors household size. It says, note, do not count any member of your household more than once. Person you are sponsoring in this affidavit. Number one, provide the number you entered in part three. So the part three is just one person we provided. We put one. So they said, person not sponsored in this affidavit. So number two says, yourself, we included one person. So number three says, if you are currently married, enter one for your spouse. So in part three, since this person is married and she's filing for the husband, so we already indicated one in number one. So we don't need to put another extra one in number three. So number four. If you have dependent children, enter the number here. So since they have just one dependent children, they, they click it one. Number five, if you have any other dependents, enter the number here. They don't have any other dependent. Number six, if you have sponsored any other person on form IA64 or form I A six four easy who are now lawful permanent resident enter the number here so they haven't sponsored anybody before so they didn't indicate that so number seven it says optional if you have siblings parents or adults children with the same principal residents who are combining their income with yours by submitting form i a 64 a enter the number here so they don't have anybody who they are sponsoring you know who they are combining their income you know with so that they leave the, the space blank so number eight says add together Part five, number one to seven. So we added together one, two, three. So the, uh, the household size is three. So we move over to part six. Part six is talking about sponsors, employment, and income. So number one says, I am currently, you click one. On which one? So the person is currently employed. Employed as a or an. So the person is an housekeeper. In number two, it says name of the employer one is Western Hotel. Number three, if they have you name of the employer two, if they have. So they don't have employer number two. Number four says self-employment as a and then occupation. If they are self-employed, you indicate. But this person is not self-employed. So number five says retire since month, date, and year. 
So they haven't retired yet. Number six says unemployed since if you are unemployed, you indicate. Number seven says my current individual annual income. So for Vivian Williams, her current individual annual income is 23000 so move over to the next one says income you are using from another person who was counted in your household include in certain conditions the intending immigrant see from ia64 instruction please indicate name relationship and income so what is this, what is this talking about is the income from the household size that is if the person is using the income from the household size so it should indicate if the person in what relationship is the person you know an income to as well so they are not using anybody in their household size. They are not using any other person in their household size. So we move over to the next one. The next one says part six, the continuation. Sponsors, employment and income. Says number 20 says my current annual income my current annual household income it says total all lines from part 6 item number 7 10 13 16 and 19 and total will be compared to federal poverty guidelines on form ia64p so since they don't have anybody the person who they are using their household income from so their total income from 7 to 19 is 23000 so number 21 says the people listed in item number 8 number 11 and number 14 and 17 have completed from IA 64A. I am filing a, a, a loan with this affidavit all necessary form IA 64A completed by these people. So they did not. 22 says one or more of the people listed in item number 8, 11, 14, and 7. So they didn't have anybody listed on it. Say so do not complete form IA64A because he or she is intending immigrant and has no accompanying dependents. So we move over to the next one. It says federal income information. It says 23A it says have you filed a federal income tax return for each of the three most recent years so they filed said yes it says note you must attach a photocopy or transcript of your tax income return for only the most recent tax year so which they will attach their photocopy or transcript of the of the tax return so number 23 B is optional I have attached photocopy or transcript of my federal income tax return of my second and th third most recent years so which is they will attach their photocopy or transcript of their federal income tax return it says my total adjusts my total income that is adjusted gross 
income on internal revenue service or internal revenue service rrs from 1040 easy as reported on my federal income tax returns for the most recent three years was 24a is saying most recent one 2019 23,000 24b second most recent one is 2018 the income is 20,000 and 24c third most recent one is 20, 20, 2017 is 15,000 so number 25 says I was not required to file a federal income return as my income was below the RRS required level and I have attached evidence to support this. So if, the, if you did not file your tax return, you have to attach an evidence for, for the, you have to attach an evidence to this to support, you know, what you are saying. So, on Vivian Williams, she is a petitioner, but also have a joint sponsor because her income is low. So, we move over to part seven. Part seven is talking about use of assets to supplement income. This is optional. So, this is... This is talking about if your income or the total income for you and your household for part 6, item 20 or 24A or 24C exceeds the federal poverty guidelines for your household size, you are not required to complete this part 7. Skip to part 8. So what this is talking about is... For those people who use their assets to supplement their income, you know, it says your asset, your asset, this is optional. So it says number one says enter the balance of all your savings and checking accounts. If you are using your assets to supplement the income, <clears throat> number two says enter the net cash value of real estate holdings net value means current asset value minus mortgage debt number three is saying enter the net cash value of all stocks bonds certificates of deposits and any other assets not already included in item number one or item number two so number four says add together item number one to three and enter the number so on vivian williams who is petitioning for the husband john williams they don't have any assets to supplement their income so we move over to number five aces names of relative you indicate number five b says your household member assets from form ia64a which is optional you indicate so this is asset of the principal sponsored immigrant so all this is just talking about if you have assets to supplement income. So since they don't have any assets to supplement their income, we move over to the next one. The next one is still the continuation, part seven of supplement income. So it says add together number six to eight. Enter the number here. So if you use any asset to supplement the income, you have to add from number six to number eight. You have to add it here, add the number here. 
So total value of asset. That's number 10. Add together number 4, number 4, 5B, and 9. Enter the number here. So you enter the total number on there. So number part 8 says sponsors, contracts, statement, contact, information, declaration, certification, and signature. It says notes. Read the penalties section of this form, I-864, instruction before completing this part. It says sponsors contract. Please note that by signing this form, I-864, you agree to assume certain specific obligation under the Immigration and Nationality Act I and a and other federal laws the following paragraphs describe those obligations please read the following information carefully before you sign the form i-864 if you do not understand the obligation you may wish to consult an attorney or accredited representative it says what is the legal effect of signing form I-864? So you read it up. So the legal inform is saying, if you sign form I-864 on behalf of any person called the intending migrant who is applying for an immigrant visa or for adjustment of status, to, to a lawful permanent resident and that intending immigrant submit form IA64 to the US government with his or her application for an immigrant visa or adjustment of status under INA section 213A. These actions create a contract between you and the US government. The intending immigrant becoming a lawful permanent resident is considering the the is lawful permanent resident is the consideration of the contract. Under this contract, you agree that in deciding whether the intending immigrant can establish that he or she is inadmissible to the u.s state as a person likely to become a public charge the u.s government can consider your income and assets as available for the support of the intending immigrants says what if i choose not to sign the form i-864 the U.S. government cannot make you sign the form I-864 if you do not want to do so. But if you do not sign the form I-864, the intending immigrant may not become a lawful permanent resident in the United States. What does signing the form I-864 require me to do. If an intending immigrant becomes a lawful permanent resident in the United States based on a form I-864 that you have signed, then onto your obligation under the form I-864 terminate, you must A provide the intending immigrant any support necessary to maintain him or her at an income that is at least 125% of the federal poverty guidelines for his or her for his or her household size 100% if you are petitioning sub sponsor and are on active duty in the US army forces or u.s coast guard and the person is your husband wife 
unmarried child under 21 years of age. And B says notify U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, of any changes in your address between 30 days of the change by filing form I-865. So guys, you have to read up this one have to read up this one because of time so we move over to the next one the next one still the continuation of part eight sponsors contract statement contact information declaration certification and signature the continuation So we move over to the sponsor's statement. It says, note, select the bus for either item number 1A or 1B. If applicable, select the, the box for number 2. So on this 1A, it says, I can read and understand English and I have read and understand every question and instruction on this affidavit and my answer to every question so 1a we selected 1a because it's applicable to us 1b is talking about the interpreter name so it's just talking about someone who interpret this form to you so they needed the interpreter's name on it on 1b so number two is the preparer, the person who prepared this form for you. They need the person's name. The preparer's name who prepared this form for you is number two. We move over to the sponsor's contact information. Number three, sponsor's daytime telephone number. Put it right there. Which we all did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Number four, sponsors mobile telephone number. Same thing. Number five says sponsors email address, if any. So the sponsor's email address we used was Vivian Williams at Yahoo.com. So we move over to sponsors declaration and certification so please guys read carefully please read carefully we move over to the next one the next one is still the continuation of part 8 sponsors contact contract statement contact information declaration certification and signature the continuation so please guys read we move over to the sponsor signature so 6a sponsors signature 6b the date of the signature don't forget these two are very important you have to sign you have to put print also put the date of the signature so it says note to all sponsor if you do not completely fill out this affidavit or fail to submit required documents listed in the instructions USCIS or DOS may deny your affidavit so guys you have to complete this form and also don't forget to sign and also put the date of the signature please guys don't forget these two are very important so we move over to part 9 part 9 is talking about the interpreters con that information certification and signature so on this part is talking about if someone interprets this form just like we did 
on the sponsor because the sponsor was the one who filled up the form so it's almost the same thing so one a is talking about the interpreter's last name you put it right there one b is talking about the first name of the person who interpret this form number two is talking about the interpreter's business or organization name if any we move over to the interpreter's mailing address 3a says street number and name 3b if they have apartment street floor you indicate which one 3c city or town 3D states 3E zip code if they have 3F province 3G postal code 3H the country we move over to the interpreters contact information same thing we did over for the sponsors contact information they needed their daytime telephone number they needed their mobile telephone number on number five. Number six is the interpreter's email address. The person who interpret this form, they needed the email address of the person. So interpreter certification. So interpreter certification, they have you have to put it in the box right there. So you have to read this person, the interpreter have to read this and you know you have to put in the interpreter certification in the box so we move over to the interpreter signature 7a is talking about the interpreter signature please guys don't forget this is very important you have to sign number 7a number 7b they needed the date of signature the month the date and the year so we move over to the next one part 10 part 10 is contact information declaration and signature of the person preparing this affidavit if other than the sponsor so whoever helped in preparing this form the person they needed the person last name first name and the business the uh, preparer's business organization name so 1a you have to put in the last name 1b the first name number two is the preparer's business or organization name we move over to the preparer's mailing address 3a street number and name 3b apartment street floor you indicate which one 3c is the city or town 3d they have states you put it right there what's the state 3e the zip code 3f the province 3g is the postal code 3h country we move over to the preparers contact information preparers daytime telephone number number four Preparers mobile telephone number if any number six preparers email address if any so we move over to the prepare statements says number seven a says I am not an Anthony or accredited representative but I have but have prepared this affidavit on behalf of the sponsor and with the sponsor's consent so this is the prepare statement on number 7a 7b says i am an Aunt anthony or accredited representative and my representation of the sponsor in this case you know you indicate the extent you indicate again do not extend beyond preparing preparation of this affidavit so you have to indicate which one is it extend or does not extend beyond preparation of this affidavit so you tick which one so it says note 
if you are an attorney or accredited representative, you may be obligated to submit a complete form G28, entry of notice of appearance as attorney or accredited representative, or G28-1, note of entry of appearance as attorney in matters outside the geographical confines of the United States with this affidavit. Says prepares certification. Says by my signature, I certify under the penalties of perjury that I have prepared this affidavit at the request of the sponsor. The sponsor then reviewed the, this completed affidavit and informed me that he or she understands all of the information contained in and submitted with his or her affidavit, including the sponsor's declaration and certification. And that of all this information is complete, truth and correct. I completed this affidavit based only on information that the sponsor provided to me or authorized me to obtain or use. So in this place, this preparer have to put in the signature on 8A, 8B, you have to put in the date of the signature. So we move over to the next one. I think that's the last one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we move over to part 11. Part 11 is talking about additional information. It says, if you need extra space to, comp to provide any additional information within this affidavit, use the space below. If you need more space than what is provided, you, make, you may make copies of this page and complete and file with this affidavit or attach a separate sheet of paper. Type or print your name and A number, if any, at the top of each sheet. Indicate the page number part number and item number to which answers refer and sign date each sheet so what is this talking about is additional space for those of you that have something else to add you know the space is not enough so this is the space you're gonna use this is part 11 this is talking about the additional space so in case of you, the space is not you know complete for you guys when filling up the form so you have to use this part to complete what you are filling and please don't forget to they say don't forget to sign the date on each page so guys this is how it looks like don't forget to sign on each sheet you have to print your name and your A number, if any, at the top of each sheet. So please guys, don't forget that. We've come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.